Hello everybody, Sanyo, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's video, I wanna talk about ARK Invest article, about what was overlooked in 2022. And of course, this was an article published a little bit over, over a month ago. And I believe this article was supplemented with a video from Kathy Woods, uh, going over uh, the big ideas 2023 report, uh, which I actually made a couple of mentions that I really don't think more than 100 people actually read the report, uh, let alone even, uh, you know, discuss about it on uh, social media as opposed to previous years where I remember big ideas 2022 report, 2021 report, 2020 report. I mean, I remember there were a bunch of videos on it. I mean, not just in the, not in the genomic side of things, more like uh, the AI, robotics, you know, electrical vehicles, all the Tesla, uh, the set Tesla hype uh, on social media. There were just lots of references, right? Even, you know, CNBC was referencing and so on. But, you know, this year, because of the market crash and the recession there in the market side of things, it got a little bit less attention. Uh, and, but, you know, I said, you know what, let me go over this article really quickly and actually go over. Um, so obviously, they talk about different verticals that uh, that ARK Invest has always, always uh, done in their big ideas report. They go ahead and sort of select a few verticals, whether that's uh, electrical vehicles, robotics, and sort of discuss about uh, certain technologies, trends, and so on. And of course, here, they're talking about ChatGPT and all the good, good things going, going on in the last few weeks, uh, starting this year for sure. Uh, but I want to bring our attention to the genomics revolution, right? Which is actually where... Um, where I wanted to basically uh, direct this video to. So, um, so what they do here is they sort of you know outline a couple of key points, right? Base editing, price, prime editing, CRISPR genome editing, other cell gene therapies, molecular diagnostic testing, um, and they go ahead and say, let's read out a couple of things here. Base editing in 2022 to two, thanks to a new form of genome editing, a young girl in UK with leukemia went from her deathbed in May to cancer-free in November. Base editing and multiplex, multiplexing have the potential to provide more effective CAR T treatments for patients with otherwise un incurable cancer. So this was big in the news, uh, and obviously here, uh, Ark Invest is starting out strong by claiming the base editing is a part of the revolution, right? And I don't think anybody watching this channel doubts that statement. Prime editing, that's surprising. I would not put prime editing. Um, on top of, I'm not sure if this is order. I don't think this is really in order in a sense, but um, I would not put prime editing at as a second point in my opinion. But anyways, uh, in 2022, the Dutch scientists uh, at Hubert, I'm not even gonna pronounce that, Institute, UMC Utrecht, uh, the Uncode, Uncode Institute used another form of genome editing, prime editing to correct a mutation that causes cystic cystic fibrosis in human um, cells. In addition, Korean researchers at Yonsei University use prime editing to successfully treat liver and eye disease in adult and mice. Okay, I mean, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say prime editing is, you know, is yet a highlight like base editing is maybe, but I mean, I understand why they would put that. CRISPR genome editing, awarded Nobel Prize 2020, CRISPR Genome editing has delivered functional cure of beta thalassemia and sickle cell disease. CRISPR therapeutics and Vertex have treated more than 75 patients. In a well-publicized functional cures, they are expecting FDA approval for Hexacell, which is CTX-01, the treatment for sickle cell and beta thalassemia in early 2023. Other cell and genome therapies in 2022, regulators have approved several landmark cells and gene therapies. Yeah, so and molecular diagnostic testing. Uh, it's interesting they don't call out a specific company here in the molecular diagnostic testing. Um, but nonetheless here, um, I think, do I agree with with a couple of points here? First of all, I, I totally agree that I think base editing last year in 2022, it sort of, you know, uh, had another leap, right? I mean, this is how you have to look at it, right? When there's a new technology, a new form of technology, you have to look at which level of leap it's on, right? So uh, base editing, you know, everybody knew about base editing years ago, right? I mean, 2018, 2019, 2020, when beam therapeutics went public, uh, 2021, it was big in the topic, but 2022, it took another leap, right? And of course, that patient there was one of the big leaps, but also with Verve 101 getting their uh, clinical trial phase one in UK and New Zealand, 
took a leap, right? Um, same thing with prime editing. I would not say prime editing is in that level of stage yet. I think it's way too early uh, to start making claims about uh, the success of prime editing yet. I mean, I, I, I sort of resonated with Biotech2K1 on social media there. Uh, he or she actually claims that you know they, they need a lot more data, right? They need a lot more data. And to sort of make those promises, um, sort of riding on the success of CRISPR-Cas9 and, and the first gen generation of CRISPR, and of course, of course, of base editing, which is the second generation of CRISPR, sort of creating its own third generation of CRISPR, I just think it's unfair. I think it's unfair. I think we have to let the story play out. We're not even with a CRISPR-based therapy yet approved by the FDA. Why are we even talking about the third or even fourth generation? I mean, I think it's, I, I, I see why people do that because people often do that because of what happened in the internet world, right? You think about the search engine, right? You think about Yahoo, you think about Alta Vista. Google came in, which was basically the second generation of a search engine and took over. And uh, look how long it dominated, right? Uh, you look at the other companies like, you know, social media, right? You look at MySpace, which was doing amazing MySpace uh, in the early 2000s, even mid-2000s. And then um, Facebook came along and swept the whole thing and it's still dominating, right? Uh, I can see why people focus on the second generation. But, you know, to go on the third and fourth generation, I think it's way too early. I think it's um, from, again, don't forget, this is, this is, a report talking about what was missed in 2022. And I don't think prime editing was missed in 2022. If anything, I would say that a lot of people have not sort of put the right spotlight on CRISPR uh, for what it actually matters, right? The clinical trials, all these companies getting clinical trials in, getting data in, like Caribou got their data in for the first time ever. And TLA 2000, um, 2002 got some data in as well, which is also impressive. Um, you know, you look at Verve 101 getting their data, uh, potentially getting their data early this year, mid this year, but going through clinical trial, Graphite Bio, which is a mess, but they still got at least a clinical trial, at least they tried it last year in the summer, and Editas also, you know, obviously there's a turmoil there, but at least those companies, those companies trying, right? And then you see CRISPR Therapeutics, what they're doing with 110, 120, 130 with Viasite, uh, which we've yet to get any sort of data, but the point here is that lots of promising things in uh, 2022 that happened that I think um, I think that's what was missed. I don't really necessarily think prime editing as a whole was missed. I don't even think base editing, the topic of base editing was missed, but hey, I understand, like ARK Invest, they have to address this generic article, and you guys gotta remember, these are retail investors, these are investors with millions of dollars, uh, that not necessarily have time to sort of look at the specifics. Okay, well, CRISPR Therapeutics has 75 patients, those, and they submitted that in November, and we can expect expect they get a response. And they don't have time for that, right? They, they're looking at the grand scheme of things. They're looking at CRISPR as a whole. So, okay, this is here to stay. Let's put some money in ARCG, right, in the ETF, because they're invested. They have some sort of exposure to CRISPR. Of course, there's other things too, like testing, right? You know, there was, I was listening to an interview between uh, Simon um, from ARC, Barnett, Simon Barnett and um, Tasha from ARC, and they were talking about the exact uh, biosciences, right? And they were talking about how the testing and all that good stuff there, what's happening in that field, right? So there's really a lot of thing happening in the genomics revolution, right? When you think about it, when you sit down and look at those these companies and you're like, you know what, there's... A lot of things going on in 2022, lots of things happened, but because of the market crash, the recession that we were in, and we're still sort of in, of course, um, things were slow. Um, I really, really, really believe in the next few weeks, we're gonna have a really good view of CRISPR in the next two, three, four years, pending on uh, Hexacell's approval from the FDA. Uh, I see no reason to deny it, but again, can't provide you guys financial advice. This is just educational information. So as always, guys, hopefully you guys appreciated this video. Like this video if you found value. Subscribe if you're not. And I'll see you guys in the next video here. And let me know in the comments below what do you guys think. Hopefully you guys are having a beautiful, beautiful Sunday. Uh, it is a long weekend, like I mentioned to you in the last video. So stay safe wherever you are. Thank you.